Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Teams here at uh, Chaos Communication Camp 2023. With me on stage today are two members of the NOC, the Network Operating Center. We have Will H. and Nico Tuck. Um, and we'll talk about what the NOC actually is, what they do, etc., etc. To give a little bit of an uh, impression of what, how, many, how much work goes into getting internet to the camp and to the people here into the tents. So, uh, let's start with the team. What network operating center or internet manufacturer? Which, which name is it? Well, kind of both of them. Hello, everyone. Uh, we most of the times are called the NOC, but on the radio you can't really distinguish between NOC, VOC, LOC, POC and everyone else. So we prefer to be called Internet Manufacturer, at least on the radio. And it, it sounds a bit better and sounds more like what we do here. And, and how, how, how many people are we? How, how big is the team? The team is about 30 people actually. Um, we, we mostly work in English because we have a lot of people from different, different countries, from the Netherlands, from UK, uh, as well as just Germany. So we're a slightly different team I think in, in, in chaos events where we're working really nearly always in English. All right. Uh, so, and and the, 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 the size of the team of course varies during the events, a few people during, during build up and then mm. gradually increasing until Yes, yes. The mo all of the work is, is really in, in advance of the event and in, in build-up and, and tear-down and not less during the event itself. Unless, unless something breaks. <laughs> exactly, and, and things do break, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the outdoors. Yes, yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, um, at, a, at a chaos event, at a hacker event, um, internet is, I think, the... M you could argue, is it more important than water and, and <laughs> waste, waste, wastewater, but it's one of the mo high, higher priority items. So, um, how, how, do we get, how do we get the internet to the camp? How does that, how does that actually work? Because we're in the middle of nowhere, basically. So, Yeah, so actually, we, this year, we, we actually have two separate uplinks, which is quite nice. Um, uh, in previous camps, we've because it's difficult, we've only had one uplink. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, fibre has been built a lot more for ordinary users around the countryside. So we've been able to get a connection here in the Ziegelai Park and also one a little bit further away um, uh, where we had to run a fibre through some fields manually uh, to reach. So you're actually taking taking the fiber cables and running them through fields, through yes. trenches, and yes, exactly. Yeah, um, there's a lot of cables to be installed uh, to, around the site, which is actually more challenging than than the, the because there's a lot of things here at the Ziegler Park, um, a lot of train tracks and pe tents and so on <laughs> that are maybe in the way. <coughs> also quite important in the planning stage. So a lot of work goes in the planning before the event. Where do we have to lay fiber because we need connectivity there? And which routes can we use to get the connectivity there? Are there active train tracks so we have to duck underneath? Or are there active road crossings and train tracks where we have to build a bridge over it? It's similar with the power team. So we cooperate together and have a look at each other plans on where we can do stuff a bit simpler and only do one bridge or only one trench under the train, mm -hmm. uh, train tracks. But yeah, this is a lot of work before the event because we, we cannot really dig here. There's a lot of old brickwork in the ground. So doing longer trenches is kind of impossible and really annoying. <laughs> so when, when does planning start for, 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 for all of this? Well, I think the, the first meeting usually is around GPN. Uh, where that we would be March, ma March, March, yeah, and that yeah. March, April, May in that area where we get together, meet who is there. So it's not like we don't have to be there, but it's always kind of nice to meet friends and have a roughly uh, idea on what mm. we are doing. And then most of the stuff is planned on the internet <laughs> from home, <laughs> doing kind of a lot of uh, CAD yeah. works with a map, doing uh, planning all the automation. Configuration. Uh, uh, planning for this event is a bit easier because we, we already know the Ziegelau Park having been here twice before already, so we know what we're facing with train tracks and buildings <laughs> and all this stuff, so uh, that's a little bit easier. And, and of course, things like there are some items which are a longer lead time, like arranging the actual uplink is really that, that work starts perhaps a year in advance, mm. um, just, just to be sure. Yeah. 
So dear project office, please, please, please find a new location. Nock is looking for new challenges. <laughs> 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 um, any rodent incidents so far? Because at the last, I think last one or the one before we had a few outages. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. No, no rodent incidents. We have had a, a train run over a fiber, um, and we've had some other damage actually, just accidental. Um, well, I guess a rodent eating a fiber is also accidental, <laughs> but um, yes, uh, uh, some some other damage. Um, and we have some more resilience this time as well um, because of Two our uplinks. improvements. Yes, and also around the site as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have to kind of rush to, to resolve problems yeah. immediately. I mean, we, we already touched on it a little bit. So um, we, get, we have two uplinks to the campsite. Um, what, what's, the, what's the bandwidth? Um, we have a, a, two, a 20 gig plus a 10 gig. Okay. Uh, so we have, we have 30 gigs available. A little, bit, a little bit smaller than at Congress, but... Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, it is, yes. But actually the usage is, is lower, right? It's a different kind of event in some mm. ways. And so, you know, our usage is, um, I think, I think like five gig or, or so around there. So that's, that's perfectly fine. So the, the usual credo, um, use more bandwidth still applies. <laughs> yeah, well, people can, yes. Yeah. But actually most people should enjoy other things than, than <laughs> that. Yeah. There's plenty to see and do here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So... Uh, once, once we, we, so we have internet uplink into s some sort of building in the data center, mm. which we'll touch on in a minute. Um, how do you distribute this uh, around the campsite? How you, you already touched on the topic of fiber, so you're yep. laying fiber. Yes, so um, it's it's a lot easier for us because there's no real distance limitation to just run a lot of fiber. So every Darden Clo really has a, a fiber uplink um, of some sort. So yes, there's a lot of cables to run um, all around the site. Um, and that's, and that's what Nico was talking about with the planning and, and mm -hmm. the work required there because we have to figure out how to run these cables. Yeah. And also a good thing with fiber is it is electrical isolating. Mm -hmm. We have different generators on the sides powering different grids which are not necessarily on the same level and we cannot connect these with copper cables. This is also why we required unshielded ethernet cables this year to be connected into the dart and clothes because we had Im incidents in 2019 where uh, we had a coupling between two generators on a shielded ethernet cable. Luckily, no hacker was harmed there, <laughs> but we still wanted to make sure that uh, we can continue the tradition of not harming any, any hackers with power on network in this year's event. So the, the, the genera generators you mentioned, these are the, the, the Breda nerds, the, the yes. power generators to, to produce the electricity that all the hackers and tents and infrastructure needs. Yeah. Um, and so we have fiber all around the, the campsite. Um, you're digging around, uh, below. Usually you dig below the, the, the train lines. Yeah. Uh, some accidents happen. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you have fiber at, at several points at the campsite. Um, and I've seen some people are not familiar with the Daten Klo. So the, the fiber ends in the Daten Klo at the switch, probably. Yep. Um, so could you explain a little bit what is the Daten Klo? Uh, so where does this come from? How does this work for people who have never heard of it? So actually, what you need is is you need to rent a large number of enclosures, right, that you can put your stuff in that are waterproof and easy to secure. And, um, well, it turns out these plastic toilets, you can go to an event rental company and they, they can figure this out. So they're not equipped as actually with toilets. They don't have chemicals and there's not actually any toilet paper in there. They come uh, right from the, from the factory, right? Yeah, actually yeah, these yeah. did, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so, so yes, they, but they're easy to rent and lock up. And, and so it's, it's strange because people arrive and they think, oh, well, there's lots of toilets everywhere. I'll, I'll camp next to the toilet. It will be convenient. It's like, yes, it is convenient, but for Wi-Fi and Internet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what's, what's inside one of those plastic toilets? Uh, at least a switch. Some um, fiber? Yeah, some fiber connections, um, some power like for the local things and often things oh. from, from other teams we, as well. We, we even oh, have yeah. a photo yeah. on the left here. Yeah. So, yeah, you see, you very see typical, some, some yeah. fiber spools on the ground. So usually our fiber comes on spools and we don't get new fiber for every event on the perfect length. So there will be uh, usually more fiber uh, left and these spools are in a dart and uh, And then there's a switch on the back. There's a PoE injector for the Wi-Fi access point, which is also attached to the, to the pole on the dart and on the outside. And we see a little black box uh, on the right side with a yellow sticker on it, which is a CWDM splitter. Uh, we used this technique the first time last year at MCH in the Netherlands. 
and reused that here too. And we got a little bit more. What's, into what's, the, what's the benefit of using that? Or what's the functionality of this? Uh, this for, is for, for, for someone who's not <laughs> deep in technical. This, 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 is, this is difficult to explain without a diagram, actually. <laughs> um, however, there is, we did a good presentation on this at the MCH okay. um, uh, event. Uh, but uh, yes, it's, really, it's, it's so we get some flexibility in how we run the fiber and the number of mm -hmm. cores of the fiber we need. Um, because, you know, we have like around 65 Darden clothes. So, there's a lot of that's a lot of stuff. Um, we want to we want to deploy this efficiently and, and not have quite so many fibers because that gets very difficult for us to manage. But the the basic stuff is you like with light. Uh, there are multiple colors of light, and you can do the same thing on fiber. You can have different colored laser optics on the fiber and break in and out just a single color. So we have mm -hmm. four decays in a row, and each decay has a different color. So in the end, there's only one uh, fiber cable with two, two cores in it, powering all four decays. Mm. And with this technique, we can also do redundancy a bit better because we can break it out from two sides. So most of the decays here this time have two times 10 gig uplink to dif two different sides on, on the venue here. Mm. And if one fiber breaks, there's a high chance that the Darton Claw is still active on, on the remaining leg. There are some Darton Claws where this wasn't feasible in the, in the planning stage, yeah. so they are single homed to, to one of our core sites, but it's still the, the best we could do. Yeah. And, yeah. and those are the ones where the fibre has been damaged, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. So, um, just again for, for, those, for those viewers um, who, who have never been to such an event and are still confused, so um, the the, the plastic toilet has a switch in it, um, and people then come up with a with a with a regular uh, cable and say, "I want, I want, I want, I want a 10 gig uh, of one gig uh, connection to my tent." Yep. Um, how does this work? Do they do they just open the toilet, or, or, or what's the process? So, um, so actually, they you unroll a cable and leave some slack for us to connect it. Well, actually, uh, our great knock help desk volunteers, our, our angels, are going round with a big round. So they, they walk around the whole site and connect the cables uh, over time. So, so you leave your cable, and they will come around, unlock, plug it in, and move on to the next one. Uh, and then, this, and then the same in reverse, I think, <laughs> at the end of the event. Uh, right. And you mentioned uh, you mentioned earlier that this year the big the big change or one of the changes. Um, uh, is that you're only allowing unshielded, um, unshielded cables for the potential uh, differential. Yeah. Well, what some people also do is they use a long shielded cable uh, where the shield is only connected on one end mm. and then have like a, a, a meter short, unshielded uh, yeah, yeah, pigtail yeah. Uh, in the Darton to to get rid of that problem but still have the benefit of a, of a shielded cable mm. on the long run, which is <laughs> beneficial for 10 gig. Uh, which mm. we do offer in these Darton clothes here, okay. so you can get so I can ten get gig, um, ten, ten gig to the tent, which I can't get at home, which is nice. <laughs> yes, every, actually, actually, nearly every port in those Darton clothes is, is ten, ten gig capable now, ten mm. gig copper. The support in people's laptops or so on is not so great, <laughs> but it, it, it is available. Yes, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And also, it's it's the same band with up and down, so we mm. don't do like one gig down and hundred meg up, mm. or ten gig down and ten meg up. So no, it's you're, you're doing the proper internet. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and and if I if I connect my laptop to to the to the cable, is that directly connected to the internet, or do I still have some 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 firewall or some some nothing in between or? Yeah. Only on the Wi-Fi. On the Wi-Fi, we offer firewalled connectivity because um, on the internet there's a lot of port scanning going on, and this uh, is not good to have all these like probing packets on the Wi-Fi, and also for the battery life of your smartphone. If it gets constantly hammered with port scans, it mm -hmm. will quite uh, rapidly decrease. So the default on the Wi-Fi is to only allow connection from the campsite, but not from the internet. Mm -hmm. But you can choose uh, if you'd like to accept that uh, on, on your laptop or, or even on your phone. But all the cabled connectivity is the bare internet without any filtering, anything. So I, 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 should, I, I should harden my laptop before I connect it to that cable. Or you should always harden your laptop before it's connected <laughs> yes. to any cable. Yeah. But especially here. Yes, it's, 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 it's the, different it, from at home. It's the raw stuff, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you already mentioned uh, Wi-Fi. I mean, everything is wireless these days, of course. Yeah. Um, so you have an access point with, on, on, on every Datenklo. Um, yeah. 
How, how many? So we have a, actually 146 live right now. Uh, what actually happens is you'll notice that's more than the number of Darden clothes we have deployed. And what we actually do is we start, every Darden clo has an AP. That's the thing on the pole that sticks out the top that people will see. Um, and uh, then we, we deploy like fill access points, like maybe in villages or in... At heaven. Yeah, exactly, in the bigger tents and so on. Mm. And, and one of the things is we actually keep on building this during the event. It's, it's like a, people report poor coverage in an area and then we go, oh, hey, let's fix that. And then we keep on doing this until maybe halfway through the event and then it yeah. becomes pointless. And, and you mentioned the access points are on, on top of the Datenklow. And yeah. then there is also um, a large LED tube, uh, a colorful LED tube on, on top of that. What is that about? I mean, a lot of people ask me, what is, what, what is this thing doing on, on, on top of the Datenklow? <laughs> Apart from looking very nice. Has, has that a functionality? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think they've been with us since OM 2013. Uh, they are basically receiving DMX or ArtNet data via Ethernet, uh, showing the animation. So if the animation stops working, uh, it will switch to a dim light. So you know that the internet or the Ethernet is down in this Daten Claw. If the power is down, obviously it's it dark. will be, it will be <laughs> dark. But if the power is there, but only the network is down and has an issue, uh, then it will be a dim light. We've always well, kind of playing with the animation. So during the day, we currently have a flame on. In the night, it was a, a more dim or red or green yeah. flame. In between, we had some green with a pink uh, stars in it, so kind of sparkling stars, which is a less visible or not less noticeable animation, but it's kind of the color scheme of the camp, which is quite nice. Mm -hmm. So, so animation can change, but as long as it's blinking, it's it's fine. Yeah. So do you have a, do you have one of your angels on top of the of the of the hill to watch out if if all the <laughs> if all the button close are online if all the lights are blinking or do you have a more sophisticated uh, solution to monitor these well, things? Um, yeah, we, we have some monitoring and uh, one of the big changes we made this year was um, some implementing some things from other camps. Uh, a lot of people would have looked at the map, um, the new new map. Uh, uh, this year, and actually, we have all the Darden Claw on the map, and the icon changes color uh, when the when the uh, when the ax when the uh, de devices are deployed. The Darden Claw is live; it goes green. If it then um, uh, fails for whatever reason, it goes red, which is pretty nice actually, because uh, often there's a local power outage or something like that, so uh, we can we can report it, and and people can or, also or a, tr or a train running over your fiber. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so that's how the internet gets to the to the um, to the tents and to the to the Wi-Fi devices. Um, what ab what about the services that we offer? We we offer like wikis and, and, and stuff like that. Is that all? Is that all running through that um, 20 and 10 gig uh, internet connection or? A lot of the, the we're, we're very keen on the stuff that is necessary for the operation of the network. Um, this actually processes sensitive personal data, things like your MAC address, your IP address, and we like to collect as little data as possible and it to not leave the site. So um, we have the, the servers, you know, that maybe say your DNS resolver and this kind of thing, and uh, they're, they're actually all wiped. Uh, securely wiped before they leave the site. Uh, so it's important for us that those services which are essential on the camp are, are hosted locally and we have a, a data center mm -hmm. container mm -hmm. for this. And, um, and then also we're hosting uh, other servers for some other teams which are good to have on site, for instance, like the, the VOC uh, for video streaming mm -hmm. and uh, a few other teams as well. And do, do you also provide like some sort of co-location, or if some, if people bring bring their own no. servers? No, not not here. It's too expensive, uh, the, you know, because of the electricity source and the fact it's rather warm here, and uh, um, we can really only provide this for like essential oh, uses. Yeah, and yeah. even then, it's quite a bit of effort <coughs> and cost to provide this. But I think I've seen it's it's like one container with the blinking light. Yeah. So uh, yeah. so we started in 2019. We were like, oh, why why hide this away? Let's let's actually make it nice for people to look at. So now you can go and look in the window and peer in, and I can see from the fingerprints on the window quite a people are <laughs> people are looking in there. So maybe, maybe we should get a window cleaning. <laughs> <or something. laughs> and of course it's locked up because otherwise yeah. people yes. would, would, would improve the, the, the situation. Yes, yeah. and we need to keep the door shut because yeah, it's, yeah. it needs to have air conditioning and, and so on in there. And, 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 also, and also the other teams depend on their services uh, being up and yeah. not being yeah. well fiddled around with. 
uh, event phone is hosting in there, the video streaming and recording is running mm -hmm. in there, the GSM team has their rack in, in the colo. And um, that's basically it. It's, it's us and the three others. So we uh, only provide that service on to a very close user group. But since everyone can uh, can have 10 gig at their tent, uh, it also lower the need of a yeah. like Yolo Colo uh, as we had on on the congress yeah. earlier. Yeah. Yeah. We even managed to get a, a second a data center site this time, so we can have a bit of redundancy. Most of the services are single homed in the container, but some of the stuff like the Wi-Fi controller, the uplink, the routing is also uh, mirrored to a second site to minimize the outage if, if something breaks. I mean, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest um, um, enemy of, of network is always those big, big yellow heavy machines that either dig through the cables or, or knock the container over. So having some redundancy is uh, always nice, right? At least the big yellow machines having on site here are really friendly to our network. <laughs> yeah. So we didn't have incident with these. So they behaved so far. Yes. Mostly it's actually people, uh, um, we have power outages when it rains a lot and someone's left a connector like in a, in a puddle somewhere and then <laughs> we cannot provide network without, a, without power. Um, but we're working pretty closely with the power team here who are great. And uh, so, so, you know, we can, we, we're making sure that, yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that it's all working. Uh, well, I've heard of quite a few demands of, of delivering power over, over Wi-Fi, so if it could work on that, that would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> right, and of course, um, I mean, we have seen it at other events in the, in the infrastructure review. You also have a dashboard where you collect all the data and the traffic data and, and, and numbers galore, right? Yes, everyone, yes. Yes, yes, everyone loves these, these numbers and so on. I mean, we're, we're at over uh, 6,000 uh, Wi-Fi clients right now. Um, and uh, 89 switches? Yeah, 89 switches deployed, so that's a good amount of hardware and a good number of users. Um, there, uh, there's also good mobile coverage for people who do not want to use the network here now with a, uh, a telco putting a mast here, but um, yeah, really, yeah, lots but of people But you're not, know. you're not controlling their mast, right? It's no, just, no, no, but it's, but yeah. it's, uh, um, it's, uh, it provides some alternatives, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but most people, you know, need the network. Yeah, yeah. Well, with our network, it's it's not much fun running around here with access to the map and everything. And increasingly, you know, all the other teams, they've discovered they can use computers to manage things <laughs> and therefore they need internet as well. I mean, uh, this, uh, even the, say the power team have a QR code you can scan to report issues and, and there's, there's lots of this uh, yeah. um, uh, ever more dependent on the network uh, so for so many other services that are provided. For, the well, camp. For, for some reason, the video operating system, uh, video operating center, is still planning all these shows uh, on the on the container walls. In, in <laughs> so we, we will we will we will have to convert uh, them. Sometimes this way actually works. All, mm. Most of our knock planning that's on site when we have small jobs and so on, we have our big. Kanban board with post-it notes, and it's very satisfying. You take a ticket, you move it from needs doing to in progress, and you come back and you put it on the, it's done now, and, and now we have a whole wall of stickers that are done. <laughs> uh, talking about done, um, we already touched on the topic of build up, uh, tear down. So that one thing is um, laying the cables, digging up uh, trenches or whatever to, to lay the cables. Uh, <clears throat> what about the software infrastructure? Is that is that also someone sitting and installing operating systems and, and stuff? Or Kind of, yeah. Um, most of the stuff is reused between the events. So there's a big share of people in the internet manufacturer also doing that on like the MCH last year in the Netherlands and likely again at the next Dutch camp uh, in 2025. And also on EMF camp, there's a big share. Even Will has his nice T-shirt on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, we little try to advertising. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we try to reuse as much uh, as possible of mm. the of the stuff. With, so there's quite a lot of automation going on uh, with with event infra, which is uh, located in the Netherlands and run by volunteers also from from the NOC. Yeah. So a lot of staging is going on there. Then more staging is going on here in a in an automated process and we now even have it automated so far since at least 2019 and I think it started a bit before 
that also port changes to have a port in a different VLANs are handled automatically. Mm -hmm. So every switch is getting a new configuration every 15 minutes. So when the, the POC or the event phone people come around and ask for a no new port for a deck station or uh, if another OC needs something, they have a guest ex or they have access to our netbox where all the configuration is stored, can do the change and 15 minutes later it's, it's deployed. Self-service, really, that's what yep. we need because it's too large to have a human, <coughs> another human in the loop. So, so yeah. like, so it's different to like the setup in the most of corporations where you need to fill in a <laughs> SAP form and then <laughs> run through 20 iterations and th three months no, later you get no, the port no, opening. No, no, there is no, there is no three months later, right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a change advisory board every 14 days. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, That's right. But also most of the teams are in a fairly similar uh, constellation every event. Mm. So we know each other fairly well. They know how we roll. We know how they roll. So that's yeah, that's good for both of both sides. So, so you're using the knowledge between the different events or friendly events or whatever yeah. we want to call them, um, and also I think the the, the hardware and the network uh, ranges etc. That's also shared between the events because I, I notice sometimes. Uh, when I'm here, I'm still located in Amsterdam or near Amsterdam <laughs> ah, yeah. where the MCH was. So, this Ge geolocation really geolo breaks with with these kind of events. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mostly, it's actually due to the access point because uh, the access points move around and, and they go to a lot of events actually, and so you, you see that. And sometimes it's due to the IP addressing as well. But yes, yes, uh, we do. We don't have a set of hardware and not use it. Uh, it's used by lots of other not-for-profit events yeah. around Europe. Yeah, also Event Infra, which is lending out this equipment, is a non-profit mm. uh, in the Netherlands, working with CCCV and all the other events. So the the events can borrow the hardware for uh, from Event Infra uh, in return to a well, I would say competitive price, but it's it's really well good for for the events because it's. It's from the community for the community. So uh, some events, depending on what they do, donate more money. Other donate hardware, which is also yep. uh, fine. So there's a, a increasing big pool of of switches, of Wi-Fi access points. So I think most, if not even all, of the stuff we use this time is coming from event infra. Mm. So if if some non-profit event needs some sort of network infrastructure. Reach out and and mm. we will see and you will see what you can do and, and what the yeah there's there's a lot of teams a yeah, yeah. lot of lot of organisations using this and, and and you have to build the network yourself um, or find some people to do that but um, uh, it's not a full service operation <laughs> but uh, um, yeah Just hardware. Just but also, if, if a for-profit wants to get rid of some hardware, which is still good to use, so some data centers tend to kick out their old boxes after mm. five years, yeah. which is not that long uh, in, in our terms, uh, you can reach out to us or Event Infra to, get, uh, to donate the hardware. That, that's how we were able to offer 10 gig, 10 gig copper to all, all the yeah. areas, because mm. a, an organization was clearing out the data center, and we said, thank you very much, and took 60-odd <laughs> switches. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and otherwise, they would probably have to pay for to get those... Uh, to get them uh, uh, disposed properly, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I think we touched on most of points of the points. Um, in in an event like EMF camp or MCH or the the, Dutch, the next Dutch camp or CCC camp, um, are you already? Is, is your team filled up? Do you still are you still looking for for volunteers during build up or tear down, or is it is it is it is it too too fragile or too? Uh, do you need so much inside info that it doesn't make sense to offer you help? Um, how is Always during teardown. Every team wants help during teardown. Um, and uh, um, because there's just so much infrastructure that we need to roll up and, and put away. Uh, but we do have a quite well organized system for this because we know we have databases and things with all the bits of equipment in. So, um, we, we, so it's not just randomly done, but um, people can so come and help us, yeah. Please don't go to the Daten Claw and, and just tear down, tear down exactly. the exit point. Come to the knock and, and ask what task you could. Yeah, we have a checklist to yeah. collect all the items and make sure and then we, we know and everything is also wiped before it's mm. both, both in terms of its storage and its uh, physical surface, which can get quite dusty yeah. um, before it's you know packaged and sent back. Um, so f since most of our work is before and long before the event, mm. uh, there are always some well, uh, well, friendly people who approach us on like day minus one or day zero and want to help us. But uh, this time the network was finished building up everything on day minus one. So we 
had to send them away because there was no work to do on these days. But on, on early build up or then the tear down, there's always more help to do. And we always, or we had a lot of angels uh, again this time to help out, uh, help out during the setup. So we built teams with, I would say, one experienced member of the NOC and one or two more angels. Mm -hmm. uh, and this worked really well. Yes, it has to be. There, there's a. There's, you have to have some experience with plugging in fibers and so on. And and all this work is physical during build up. We're not like sitting at our desks like configuring things because. Uh, we have a computer for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's running around the field, it's driving around the field, yep. and, and, and man, it's a lot, a lot of ma more manual work than you would, ma would like to think. But right? many of us have desk jobs, and yeah. so it's great fun to come in, in the field and do that. Uh, and it's and it's after the first you know. tape, the, the whole body complains, <laughs> probably, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what ibuprofen is for, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah ma many of us are also working in the industry, mm. and the colleagues are always asking, asking, so why are you on vacation? And why are you doing the basically the same thing in your way? <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's not really the same thing, and it's with different people. So yeah. all of us are doing that because we really want to do that, and this is a whole other team experience than getting paid to do that. Yeah, yeah, you learn a lot in both technical and and like transferable skills by by coming and volunteering really for many of the teams here. I think. Absolutely, I, I can totally attest to that. Um, I have one last question. Uh, we didn't touch on this when we talked about the Daten Cluster. I have to circle back a little bit. Um, as, you, as, you said, as, as you said in your in, uh, explanation, these are plastic toilets. They look like plastic toilets. They are print. The print on them <laughs> says it's a toilet. Um, do people use them as a toilet? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, what happens is a big pile arrive in a field, and maybe we don't get there to log them early enough. And someone maybe also really needs to go, so they um, have a yeah an accident. So <laughs> unfortunately, every time there's always one that's um, uh, quarantined <laughs> off and left for uh, yeah <laughs> proper disposal. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, but yes. This time the number was fairly low. I yeah. think we calculated with five spare Daten clothes and only needed two of them. So that that's good. Hmm. Yeah, yeah not and, and hopefully uh, shows like this uh, will get out the word, so maybe we can get the number oh, down. Yeah, accidents happen, and, and yeah. Yeah. The, the major thing for ordinary users out there is to know about most of our infrastructure is like we 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 don't know we can't know it's broken sometimes if unless you tell us, and um, and but we will come and, and fix it, uh, you know, if there's a yeah. problem. Yeah. Oh, any 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 last words on, from you on on Nock? Did we did we miss something? Any any important topics you want to get out? Um, Messages. There's a few things that people, if they want to know more, they can go and look in the entrance of the DC of the data center, which is near the, the info desk. Um, there's quite a lot of information on, online with now FOQ as well. If you're still having some trouble, um, and the Nock help desk will also help you with this with the service. Is there unshielded cable at the Nock help desk? <laughs> <laughs> I got that question quite often. So. <laughs> I think the Speti is selling Ethernet cables. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, they have so, they have some cable, maybe even. Some some cable left. I'm not. I'm not mm. sure. But they had some. We do ask people to bring their own cables because yeah. we can't provide for uh, six thousand users. No, no. <laughs> but who reads documentation before the event, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do write it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not blaming you. I'm just, uh, just asking. So. Any, anything else we we didn't touch on? Anything else you want to talk? No, touch no, on? But I, I, I think that that's most of it. Yeah. Uh, we could go on for hours. Yes, yeah, yes. I'm not going into technical details <laughs> or, or, yeah. or tech porn. That's uh, a, a lot of the stuff when we want to explain it is like you need a diagram and some actual yeah. like slides and things like that, and that's more in depth. And, and yeah. to be honest, we've covered that a lot in, in previous review presentations and yeah. things like that, which are all on media.cc.de. So and uh, and you're doing an infrastructure review as well for yeah. this event, right? Oh, oh, we I better write that then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should start preparing one. Yeah, <laughs> some this funny one photos. Yeah, going to be quite short. Uh, yeah, like three to five minutes. So yeah, yeah well, probably just some funny photos. <laughs> yeah, most of the stuff is still like valid from MCH yeah. review, so we could just share the link. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> adjust the data and. Yeah. Uh, mm. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Will H. Nico Tak, thanks for, for joining us in the studio. Thanks for um, having us. This was another episode of Ask the Teams, this time with the Network Operating Center. Have a great day and hopefully see you really soon in another episode. Cheers and bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>